All right, today we're doing a front window regulator replacement on the driver's side door on this beautiful 2005 Red Element LX. So let's get right into it. First thing you wanna do is you wanna take off this guy right here. It's very important. Don't just pull out on it. Don't just pull out, okay? There it is right there. It comes down right here, you can pull out. But then it has these clips on the bottom side that you will break off if you just pull it. You have to pull out and then up. Out and up. Very important, okay? Out, up. Then you wanna go back here and do the same thing on this one. This guy's a little different. It only has one metal clip. The rest of it just lines up. There's two little dowel pins that lines up with those two holes. So it's a dowel pin or a pin pin clip right there. This guy pulls kind of pulls out in a diagonal direction. All right, here's how you can do this guy. I just have a paint stir stick. I popped it under the side right here. And I'm just gonna put some pressure on there and we're gonna pop that pin right there. Like that, okay? And then this guy just pulls up diagonal, like that. All right, next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna uh, take the screws out uh, two places of the door. There's a little pocket right there and then there's another one right down there underneath the, the armrest. All right, so you're gonna take the smallest little, let's see if you can see it here, little flathead screw that you can find, and you're gonna pop it in there. I'm gonna open that guy up. Just generally, you don't wanna booger your plastic too much. You're gonna find two screws in there. Just a little Phillips head, you're gonna take those out. Same thing down here. I'm gonna pop this one open. You can use a bigger, a bigger Phillips head for this guy. Come on, dude. Let's use a bigger one. There we go. You're gonna get that screw out. All right, I'm gonna use this little tray right here. That's my screw tray. So there's my, there's my screws. That one and then those two. And I'm gonna use the top of my dash, so my little parts department. All right, like we talked about, I broke those two pieces, so I'm gonna have to super glue at least one of them back together. So I have just a tiny piece of cardboard that I cut out from my pizza box right here. And I'm gonna put that there, and then I'm gonna put a little bit of super glue on top and try and get it back on there. All right, that's after the super glue is on. I don't know, I just put a bunch on. We'll see if it works. If I, in the end, we're just gonna take that cardboard out, we're just gonna put some, put a Dremel on it and machine it out. All right, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get that speaker Speaker cap, top off, stick your hands right here. I'm just gonna pull it a little bit. Like that. Like that. There we go. Nice and easy. I won't break anything. Just like that. All right, what I did find is that uh, it looks like my speaker is kind of disintegrating on itself. Let's see here. That's not good. I don't know, maybe we'll fix that, maybe not. All right, so I turned this, the stereo on and the speaker actually sounds fine, even though it's all messed up. So I'm just gonna keep it. All right, so how we're gonna get that out is just take those three screws out. All right, so here's the clip on the inside of the speaker. I'm gonna press on the outside, pull up. I might need two hands for this. Get your little fingers in there. Your fat finger is not gonna work. You can pull up like that. All right, now so the door panel's off. Um, you just gotta unclip it. So we're gonna start from the edge. We're gonna put a little fingers in here. Again, we're gonna just slide our fingers like that. Maybe at the bottom here. And we're gonna press, okay? Like that, you hear that clip? That was one, just gonna work our way around. All right, we're gonna see if we can do the rest right now. There you go. That's nice. That's nice. There we go. Bump. Bomb. Bomb. Like that. All right, now she should just lift right up. Oh, well, I gotta take the door handle off. All right, that totally didn't work because I totally forgot. You have to take the door handle uh, off and the little uh, plate off. So we're gonna put our fingers in here and the little edge right here. And then we're just gonna pull out like that, pull it out. All right, now you got this little handle assembly pulled out a little bit and you have to push this little white clip back. So 
What I'm going to do is take a little, take my flathead screwdriver that I've been using and push it back. Use your finger to push that around. Like that. Now you can pull it, you should be able to pull it up. There you go. Just pop it right out. All right, now you kind of twirl this guy back around. And this guy comes out by pushing down on the center tab right there. Right there. All right, now we should really get the door off. We'll see. This goes. Pull up, just up, 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 up. So this is kind of a tricky part. Once you get the panel off, you have to get these little connectors off, connections off. So I found that you can actually take the thing off, but you, you have to pull the panel off and stick your hand back there. There's a little tab you can push. Like that. There's a little tab you can push right back here, right back there, and then push it back. Kind of straddling the thing with my legs, like that. There. And then you come over here to this side. I'm just gonna work this thing up, but I gotta hold it while I do it. All right, now I got the piece out. This is that tab I was talking about at the bottom. Down here on the bottom, right there. That's a piece, you kinda have to like press it like that. So it only has these two pieces that hold it in. It's this clip on top right there, the metal clip, and that tab on bottom. So if you can push those two things out, you can get this out. And I think that's, I think it's probably the best way to do it because you're gonna have to push on that connector right there. Right there, get this guy out. And I don't know, getting that out behind with the door on is kind of be kind of difficult. All right, that's what those two connectors look like disassembled. All right, now we got this plastic sheet and covering the whole door. So what we're gonna do is just pull it aside. It just, I think it's just taped up here on this one piece. So we're just gonna kind of pull it over. And just... I don't know, it's totally stuck. The plastic might have to come off. All right, so I just compromised. I didn't totally pull the plastic off. I just pulled it down on that side. And uh, I'm just gonna stick it back up. We'll see if that works. All right, gotta get your lights on, man. Working in the dark. Got my light up mounted up there and up there. All right, now it's time to get the window out. So those two top bolts, screws, are for the regulator top. And then there's two on the bottom. Down here, right there. Right there, for the bottom. And then there's two that hold the window in place. So you're gonna have to pull the window up with your hand and reach in the hall, and we're gonna lift it up. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take those two screws out right there. All right, so let's get these guys out. It's a 10 millimeter, it's a 10 millimeter socket. So it doesn't take much force. Pop these guys, just right there. That's it, almost nothing. Let me do the rest. All right, I just broke these loose, and I'm spitting these guys by hand. All right, so once you cut these guys loose, this is a tricky part. So the glass is totally free now. So I'm not gonna lose, I'm not gonna let my hand off it. I'm gonna keep my hand here. I'm gonna push it all the way up and I'm gonna tape it up top with some ma uh, masking tape and I'll show what it looks like when it's done, okay? But I gotta keep my hand on it because I don't want this thing to drop. All right, masking tape on three places. Should be good. All right, so you get these top screws here. So you can see this one doesn't have to come all the way out because we've got a slot. I guess it doesn't matter taking it out, but maybe putting it in is gonna be helpful. And then this one, we're gonna take it out. And the bottom two, we're gonna take those guys out. All right, one thing we noticed right away is this guy's short and those two middle guys were longer. So I'm gonna put these in order, right? So those are middle, that's top, and the bottom we're gonna put on the bottom, right? So bottom, middle, top, makes sense. All right, so there's all, there's all the bolts in sequence. The bottom uh, and the top are short and the middle's long. So we're gonna have to get in behind the plastic here to get to these screws. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna elongate this hole, make it a little bit bigger so I can find all those three screws. And these ones, we don't have to take them all the way off. We're just gonna loosen them, and then we're just gonna pop that thing up into those little slots. There's three. All right, so it looks like we're definitely gonna take this guy off too. So we're gonna push in the middle and pull down gently, very gently. This guy's stubborn. All right, so I ended up pulling this guy out. This guy was right here with a little clip right there. After I pulled this guy out, and just be very gentle with this because it has these plastic connectors. So when you kind of wiggle it out, just make sure you don't force it, okay? And then again, this guy, we're just gonna push this guy in. 
with a with a screwdriver. All right, I had a better idea how to get this guy out. Got a little needle those pliers. Pull that guy. Just push it through. Like that. All right, just when you think you're done and you're trying to get this thing out, you got one more. Right, come over here. There's a wire on the back side. You gotta push that guy through with your pliers, just like the other one, right there. All right, now we can try to get this thing out. So I'm gonna put one hand in the speaker hole and the other hand in this hole right here, like this. Can't see what I'm doing, it's behind the plastic, but I'm that thing free. And you can see here, it's coming out the hole. All right, we're gonna go fishing, okay? Try to pull this thing out. So I got these things side by side. There's my old one that it said made in Japan. Here's my new one, it says made in Taiwan. So we're classing it down, everybody. So it's okay, it only has to last under five years. Um, one thing I noticed is they overall, they look the same, but I gotta take my screws out of this guy. Cause the old one has the screws and the new one screwless. So they went cheap, they didn't give you the screws. So I got this guy from uh, AutoZone. This is an AutoZoner part. All right, so in order to get this guy back in, I'm gonna do the exact same thing I did to take it out, but in reverse. One thing I did wanna show you is I use my pliers, my needleless pliers technique to get this guy and this guy out so I can pull this wire up because I'm going to fish it in through that hole right there and I don't want that wire in the way. All right, one thing I noticed about getting this guy back in here, so I fished it through the hole, which is fine. It went in fine, but I did notice that when you get up to the top, so this bracket needs to go on the near side of the window. So when you have the window right there. You can see it to the hole. You have to kind of push, put your hand in here, push the window back so that you can get the bracket on the near side and the window on the far side. If you don't, the two things just butt into each other and it doesn't make a lot of sense. All right, so now that we got this step, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and put our screws back in, our top, remember, short, and bottom, short. And then from here, we're gonna put those three, those three guys back in there. All right, so putting this guy back on, you notice it seems really weird. I don't like how the wires bend, have to bend really tight like that, up like that in the background, but. I mean, that's the way it was. So it looks like it's just barely fits. And I put this guy back in, we'll clip it back in. All right, one thing I wanna show you is I, I wanted, to, I actually rewired the way the wire goes around that cable with the spring on it. So I wanted the, initially the, it went to the right, which is towards the window. And that's what made it really short. So I actually took it off and I pushed it to the left. I, I ran it around to the left. So you see now it comes to the left and now there's more space to that orange clip over there. So the orange clip is, the orange clip is on the back side of this. And uh, I actually found you can just take this guy and move it. You can just pull it down and it'll be okay. All right, now one thing you can see right here is you can see the thickness of the material you're screwing into. So it's not super thick. So you really don't have to be a He-Man when you screw these things in. You know, I just go tight enough. I don't know how much torque it is. It's probably like 10 foot pounds or something, something light. But um, you definitely don't want to torque those, uh, strip those threads. So I just go nice and easy. So one super annoying thing is I found that uh, the screw holes don't line up with the holes in the door when I put this thing back in. So I'm gonna have to put my uh, electronic assembly back on and see if I can raise it up so I can tighten up those things. So I was thinking, actually this is a good check to do. I just clip that guy back in there, just that one right there. And this is a test to see if the whole thing works. So it does work, which is good. Now I can find my screws right there. Oh. All right, this is a nice way to get those electronic pieces back in the door right there. Get yourself a nice little box. All right, put your door, put your door insert there. And then you can kind of fiddle with, with your electronic pieces and get that big, you're gonna wanna get that big connector in there first. And then everything just presses back down. Just Press it back down nicely. All right, now you can see I've, I've, I've kind of twisted the door insert. I put on my foot down there. Now it's all twisted back up on itself. But what I wanted to do was get that other, get that other smaller connector. That one down there at the bottom in there. It's pretty easy to clip it in once you put it in the right spot. All right, another little tip. I found that it was much easier to get this thing back in if the window is all the way down. That way you can kind of work from both sides. And also, the last little tip is this side has an indent that comes in right here. So you have to focus on this side, on the front side. The, the back side goes in much easier as long as you get their little door latch in. But the front side can be a pain. So really focus on this. Push, push, push. And then the whole door hint, the whole door thing hangs on it. So you have to like, it's a hook. It just hooks on it and hangs. So that's what you got to focus on to get this guy back in. 
All right, well, you get the door thing hung on. You just gotta go around the sides and clip it all in. Just push down, 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 bottom. There's a few clips. I'm not sure where they are, but just push all over, get this thing in nice. All right, next I'm gonna put my beautiful speaker back in. Again, these screws just probably screw into plastic, so you're not gonna be he-man on that. And then again, we're just gonna put this guy back on. Just clips right on. Now I'm gonna put this guy back in, the one that's under the door rest, the, the armrest. Now right, here's how we're gonna do this one. You're gonna take your right finger, your right finger, your right hand, finger, you're gonna pull like this, pull it, and kind of bend it in place like this. That's the best way I found. And again, I found that putting this thing, the clip back on was best done with your finger. Just kind of put your finger in there and manipulate around. All right, clip that guy back in place. Then we're gonna shove this guy back in there. We've got two screws and a cover and then we're done. All right, here I got one last note. If you're gonna play around with the unlock and lock function and you have the key it's still in the ignition because you're playing around with the other controls, the window up, window down, you're gonna find that the door will unlock, but it won't lock and it's gonna drive you nuts um, until you figure out that you have to take the keys out of the ignition to get the door to lock. That's I think that's an auto safety feature. It makes sense to me. Anyways, I spent about half an hour messing around with it. I actually played around with the connector and I, I shoved some wires in there. You can see that you could actually play around with the connector itself and try and figure out if your switch is bad, which I realized, I don't know, my switch, I thought my switch was bad, but then I realized it wasn't. So it's the keys in the ignition, pay attention. All right, that guy's pretty self-explanatory. Getting those screws back in, getting that cover, cover plate back in. They come over here. Remember, I spent a little bit of time talking about how to get this guy in and out. So that's where it comes into play, just like that. All right, last thing. This is my attempt to fix this last piece that's gonna go up here on the door. Um, on one side, I super glued it and I cut with the Dremel just a little slot. And on the other side, I didn't, have, I, I didn't have the plastic piece. I think I lost it. So I just drilled a hole and drilled, put a screw in there. So maybe it created like a little slot feature you can kind of see. So we'll see how it works. All right, did my little slot feature work? My screw, I don't know, maybe. Um, it does fit a little bit tighter than before. Well, so I think it was like decent enough. All right, so this is the job completed. I hope this helps somebody.